Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss the legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedoms and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, the President and General Counsel of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country in the courtrooms of America. Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedoms. Liberty Council files a lawsuit on behalf of high school students against a high school in Roswell, New Mexico. I am Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council and dean of Liberty University School of Law. Joining me is Matt Barber, director of cultural affairs for Liberty Council and associate dean for the law school. Well, Matt, Liberty Council filed a lawsuit within the last few days in federal court in New Mexico to stop an unconstitutional censorship of a group of students at the Roswell High School and Goddard High School called Relentless in Roswell. That's the organization of these students, Relentless in Roswell. And uh, this student group had previously been able to hand out various kinds of items such as food, hot chocolate, candy canes, and other things to the student body without any opposition whatsoever. No permission was required from the school. They also helped janitors with trash. They assisted their fellow students. They were good kids. But now this time, and what gave rise to this lawsuit, was they wanted to pass out these models of 12-week-old babies, 12 weeks from gestation, on these 12-week-old plastic or rubber models of these babies that are small enough to hold in your hand. Uh, They had biblical references and pro-life references, and it was that message that ultimately gave rise to the official saying it's time to shut this down some people are getting offended and that's what caused the lawsuit well the courts have said over the years that a school uh, does not have the right to silence uh, free speech on on behalf of the students because they don't like the message that's called viewpoint discrimination and the, the courts have said the supreme court has said quote it can hardly be argued that either students or teachers shed their constitutional rights to freedom of speech or expression at the schoolhouse gate here we have uh, school administrators insisting that these students shed their uh, freedom of speech their rights to freedom of expression and speech at the schoolhouse gate Well, Steve Crampton, uh, our general counsel for Liberty Council, he said, quote, the fact that students do not shed their constitutional rights at the schoolhouse gate should not be an alien concept to school administrators, even in Roswell. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Steve's got quite the sense of humor. Yeah, so this was, uh, and that's true. I mean, the fact of the matter is that they allowed these students to pass out other items with no permission required. Now, when they passed out these little 12-week gestational models of babies, unborn babies. They said, it's time to shut this down. Some people are getting offended. The school officials confiscated these baby models from the students and also from those students who weren't even distributing them. These would be students who had them but weren't distributing them. They may have received one from someone and they wanted it, but the school took it even from those individuals. They claimed that it's policy that prohibits advertising and promotional activities required students to obtain prior permission. But the problem is they had never required approval before for any other activities. And this was not an advertisement or what were they promoting? They weren't advertising anything. It wasn't uh, something that they were distributing for sale. It wasn't commercial. Well, and and, and like so many administrators in situations like this do, once they've been caught, then after the fact, they will come back and try to develop a pretext. And that's Mm -hmm. what they've done here. Their true colors showed through when they said, quote, it's time to shut this down. Some people are getting offended. Well, well, Matt, uh, tell me where exactly in the Constitution do we have a guaranteed right not to be offended? Well, in fact, the First Amendment guarantees that you have a right to be offended. (laughs) Well, that's right. Because if... uh, Uh, the First Amendment didn't protect offensive speech, speech that would make your blood boil, then why do you need it? If it only protects things that you agree with, then you wouldn't need a First Amendment. Now, the students were actually pulled out of class in this case and instructed by the principal to cease their Christian acts because they had made their point. Well, First Amendment doesn't have just one point in time where you can exercise it, and that's the only time you can do it, and it never is available for you again. Making your point 
is not something that's just an isolated event. The fact is that they then suggested the students that they ought to embrace a less controversial message of abstinence, and they gave them permission to individually hand out abstinence wristbands. But uh, one student uh, gave out the wristbands on the terms suggested by the superintendent. He, too, again, was punished with a suspension. So they said, well, tone down your message. We don't want this abortion message. Talk about abstinence. You can do that. You can even hand out these abstinence wristbands. So when they do that, they then stop a student and they suspend them for doing it. So they're really jacking them around. Liberty Council was not able to resolve this matter. We sent a demand letter to the school, got a letter back from the school board attorney that defended this situation, and now we filed a federal lawsuit. We'll be seeing this school in court. Well, Matt, what is it, in light of the overwhelming body of, of uh, judicial precedent that and that has showed over and over and over again that this is a direct violation of these of these students' rights. And there are multiple instances along similar lines, just like this, where school districts and 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 government entities have been slapped down. What? How is it that that individuals you mentioned <clears throat> the attorney for the school district here? How is it that they still still rather labor under the misconception that they are operating within the bounds of of, of uh, uh, constitutional restriction here? Well, the reason is, is because they want to have an ideological end. And I think, you know, as we're, as we're into the Elena Kagan nomination at the United States Supreme Court, she has ideological agendas that she tries to bend the law to meet. It's, very been, it's been very clear at her time in the Clinton administration uh, that she has a particular end goal. For example, on the Second Amendment, she's, was, she said she wasn't sympathetic to that claim, the right to bear arms. On the issue of abortion, she is pro-abortion, and she tries to bend the, the law or the policy to reach that goal. On the issue of homosexuality, when she didn't want people to recruit at Harvard University, she took a position that the Supreme Court later rejected by an 8-0 to decision. I mean, if she had been on the bench, it would have been an 8-1 to decision, but it was an 8-0 to decision. The liberals and the conservatives all agreed that the law in question said one thing. Because of her ideology, she pushed it and made actions and policies exactly contrary. So what you have here is, despite what the law is, if you have people in power like this,